Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel and today we're going to be using some Dollar Tree materials to make some gorgeous spring decor. For this first project, I found these jumbo clothespins actually at Dollar General in the clearance section and they were about 50 cents each a piece, I think. But I thought these would be super cute little picture stands. So I'm starting out by just taking these all apart and then I'm going to wet my paintbrush and use some of this brown paint that I have mixed up to stain all of these. So I'll just paint that on to here and then I will use a paper towel to wipe off any of the excess. I also wasn't a huge fan of the little silver springs on these. So I'm just using some of my European gold rub and buff and brushing over these to age them up and also change them from that silver color. Once everything was dry, I'm going to go ahead and put these clothespins back together and then I'm just using some of these rub-on transfers that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm cutting bigger pieces off of here instead of doing them individually. I just did a cluster of a bunch of them on this first clothespin and then any little spaces I just cut out pieces and filled those spaces in. Then I just did the exact same thing to the other one. I wanted to make some cute little spring photos to put into these clips and these are some little frame scrapbook paper that I got recently from Timu actually and I thought they were super cute for this project since they already have the little frames on these papers and then I pulled out my Dollar Tree stamps and I'm just going to use two of these. I used a dragonfly on one and then for the other one I I'm using a flower with some of my archival ink to stamp these. Then I flip those clothespins over and I could pop these right into the top of them. If you've heard of the wood flowers from Trader Joe's, then you know that they are all the rage right now, but you can easily make these from some Dollar Tree materials. So I have a few stem picks here that I got from Dollar Tree, ones that I've already used the flowers on, and then I also picked up these wooden rose curls from Dollar Tree, and then I grabbed a bag of their potpourri, which ended up having these little things in them. I don't know what these really are but they looked like flowers so I was going to use those as well. Now I'm going to leave those the brownish color that they are but for these wood rose curls I wanted to make them a dusty pink color so I just mixed some pink paint with a little bit of brown and some of my Waverly plaster to make this really pretty pink color and then I'm going in and painting all of these little rose curls. I should have used a smaller paintbrush because it was just a little difficult to get down into those rose curls. And I actually only ended up having enough for one of my greenery stems that I had left over. So I just took the extra leaves off the second one and added them onto this one just to make it a little fuller. And then I am putting my rose curls and those other flower thingies onto each of these stems. And then I'm hot gluing them so that they won't move. I also pushed up some of those leaves and hot glued them just so they wouldn't slide down the greenery stems as well. Thank you. 
For this next project, I wanted to make some cute little coasters and a little box to hold them with. So I picked up these four coasters from Dollar Tree and then I also grabbed one of their thin 18 inch pieces of wood to make the little wood box. I decided to spray paint the coasters so while those are drying I am just measuring out four equal pieces of wood and then I used my miter box saw to cut those. Then I grabbed one of these little wood squares from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of five or six I believe and that's what I'm going to use for the bottom of this. Now two of those wood pieces that I used are sitting on top of this wood piece and two are going to be on the outside of that wood piece and I'm just using some Dollar Tree wood glue to put this all together. Once my wood glue has dried I'm just going to wet my paintbrush and use some of that same brown paint color that I have mixed up that I really like to stain this entire box. Now for my coasters, I wanted to decorate them with some vintage spring. So I actually have this pretty large stamp that I got from Amazon. And I'm actually going to use different sections of this stamp on each of the coasters and kind of press them in different areas on the coasters as well. Then I grabbed my Dollar Tree stamps and I picked a few different ones to fill in the those blanks. I did a bee, a hummingbird, a butterfly, and a dragonfly. Then of course to make these look even more vintage I grabbed some used coffee grinds, added a little bit of water, and then I'm going to coffee stain all of these coasters. Now anywhere you put the coffee grinds on here you're gonna get those darker spots so i just went over these until i was happy with them and had the coffee stain and the grinds where i wanted them and then once they are fully dry you can just go in with a large brush and brush those coffee grinds off of there and then finally i just sealed these with two coats of aileen's acrylic sealer For this project, I wanted to make some wall hanging vases. So I grabbed these two little wood blocks from Dollar Tree. They actually look like two by fours and they're pretty sturdy. So I'm starting out by painting these with two coats of my white chalk paint. And then once those are dry, I'm trying a new technique. This is actually the first time I've done this, but I'm using this really pretty rose stencil that I have and I'm taking some Mod Podge and I'm just dabbing the Mod Podge over top of my two wood pieces. And then I wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out. Like I said, this is my first time doing this, but I thought it would look kind of like a impression or like wood burning or something similar to that. So once the Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to fill up a little spray bottle of water and then I'm taking that same brown color that I always use. But this time my brush is dry and I'm brushing over the fronts of these where those stencils and the Mod Podge are. Now I'm doing long strokes and then I'm going to spray this with water and then once it is fully sprayed down and nice and wet i'm kind of tipping it up letting the excess run off of there and then i'm going to take that brush and brush in long strokes to remove some of that paint and as i'm doing it i'm wiping my brush off onto my paper towel and at this point i was kind of thinking that this wasn't going to work out the way i was seeing it in my head but it does actually turn out quite nicely so after after I remove a lot of that excess paint on the top, I'm just going around this entire thing with my paintbrush and kind of using the excess and just dabbing it a little bit to paint the rest 
of this wood piece. Then I went back to the front, which had started to dry, and I'm brushing back over it with just what was left over on my brush. And you could kind of start seeing a lot of that stencil. The second one looked even better. But to finish these off and really bring out that stencil, I'm going back over it now with some of my Waverly white wax. And then I just rubbed it with a paper towel and that stencil really popped out. Then all I had to do was drill two little holes in the tops of these and add wall hangers to the back, then just pop in some greenery. For this final project, I'm using these Dollar Tree napkins and I'm not going to be using the pretty part for this particular project, but you definitely could find some pretty napkins that you like and make this with those. But for this project, I'm using the plain backside of the napkins and I'm gonna cut that in half, use those three sections, and then I cut a fourth section as well. And I'm gonna be using these Dollar Tree stamps again and also this pretty little floral stamp that I got from Amazon. Now I'm gonna stamp these flowers on two of these sheets and then for the other two sheets, I'm just gonna use the butterfly stamps from Dollar Tree. And for the two other sections, I just did some more butterflies. So once I have my napkin prepared, I'm going to grab a gallon size freezer bag. You can use any plastic for this, like plastic wrap or even grocery bags, but it does have to be plastic or you're not going to be able to remove your napkin off of here. So I'm just starting by cutting my bag open and then I cut off that little Ziploc piece as well. And then I'm taping this down to try to get it to not move as much while I'm doing this. But then I grabbed some more of those used coffee grinds, added just a tiny bit of water and mixed it up. Then I'm adding in some of my matte Mod Podge to this. And I didn't measure it or anything. I just kind of eyeballed how much to put in here. And then I'm going to mix that all up together. Once it's mixed up, I'm going to take a larger paintbrush and I'm going to start painting this coffee Mod Podge mixture onto my plastic sheet and I'm just painting it larger than my napkin. And if you haven't guessed already, we are making some faux rice paper. So once I have the Mod Podge mixture down, I'm going to very carefully place my napkin onto there and there's going to be wrinkles and there's going to be air bubbles. Try to press out the air bubbles as best you can, but as far as the wrinkles go, it's going to have wrinkles because of that plastic under it. But once I have it laid down and I've brushed out all the bubbles, then I'm going back over top of this very gently with another layer of that Mod Podge and coffee mix. Then I did the exact same process for that fourth sheet that I made, just laying down that mixture, then putting my napkin over top, brushing out the bubbles, and then adding a layer on top of there. Once I had all of that done, I set this aside to dry for 24 hours. And the next day, you can just peel this right off of your plastic sheet. And it kind of reminds me of vinyl or plastic, really, when it's off of there. And I even did it with the flowery part of the napkin and ended up making a sun catcher with it because it actually reminds me of like stained glass. But here I'm just going around and kind of trimming off any of that Mod Podge that is hanging on to the edges. And like I said, you could definitely make sun catchers with these and the pretty parts of the napkins. But for this particular project, I'm making a tabletop lantern with these faux rice paper sheets. So I grabbed one of these little wood boxes from Dollar Tree and then I'm also going to be using some dowel rods. Now 
these particular napkin sheets fit perfectly in this medium sized box. So I cut those sheets down into four pieces, remove that front little tag from this, and then I'm just dry brushing some white paint all over this box. And I'm also going to paint those dowel rods. Now I did end up cutting these dowel rods down just enough to fit in the box and then also fit my napkin pieces. Hopefully that makes sense, but you'll see right here once I start putting this together. I laid out three of my sheets in the pattern that I wanted, and then I'm taking those dowel rods using some gel super glue and gluing one dowel rod to two sheets and then one dowel rod to two sheets. Hopefully again that makes sense, but these dowel rods are kind of connecting those sheets. Now for the that last piece where I needed to put the fourth and final dowel rod, I had to glue the two sheets together first there at the very edge. And then once I start gluing this down into the box, which I'm using wood glue and you can see right here at that fourth corner, I just used a little bit more gel super glue to attach the sheets to that final rod. And then I just made sure that all those dowel rods were glued securely down into the box. And finally, I just added in some of Dollar Tree's LED candles to make this tabletop lantern. And that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.